Um, oh, good, Steve, come on up. Oh, we love testimonies about God's work, what he's doing in his life. Well, praise God. Here's Steve. Put these lights and get a suntan. Oh, I just wanted to share, like, just a little simple testimony about, like, during the course of my week when I'm going about my day now, um, I'm getting victory. Like, I, I hear the voices that I know are not from the Lord, so I just believe the opposite because the devil is a liar. Everything you hear that you know is not of the Lord is from the devil, so I just believe you just have to say, no, that's not true. The opposite is true. Shut up, devil. And then this week I got tempted a couple times to sin, and instead of doing that, I just took cast outs that I have from a guy, put them up to my ear and my phone, and just the, the, the demons just hurled out of me, and that were bothering me and aggravating me and causing me to be tempted. So instead of giving in, I have strength now to just uh, do the opposite, and um, they're, they're starting to weaken. Amen. Amen. Lord. Yeah. See, that's a testimony. You can't give up. You can't quit. You got to walk it out. So I'm just going to bring uh, Rick Cat up. So come on up. It's been good. All glory to God on Thursdays. Yesterday, the deliverance started before we started casting out demons. You know, you're getting close. I never really trusted prophets. Never ever went up in no line when someone gave me a word. I'm always kind of suspect of people. I, I, I tread lightly. Everything I do, maybe it was because of my own sin nature. So God gives me dreams. And uh, he gave me a dream about this place. And he says, okay, I'm going to have a river flowing right down here. Holy Ghost River. But it's going to take you to go to another level of holiness. And I uh, talked a little bit about it last night. Holiness. It's a scary word for most Christians. When I was an early Christian, I used to think holiness was these Pentecostal women that wore the coverings and the long black dresses down past the knees. It's like holiness. We were declared righteous. All my sins are covered in the blood. No, there's a level of getting rid of stuff in your life. And uh, we're getting this new space. And I, well, okay, how's this going to work, Lord? And I started getting some people on the team. And guys, I was recruiting, like, hey, you can help me out. And God gave me a dream. You can't have the Holy Ghost, the water flow over wood. It's, it's not workable. You can only do Holy Ghost things with Holy Ghost people. In order to be a Holy Ghost person, you got to die to yourself. And when you die to yourself, he puts something in you that's foreign to your nature. You might have been a pretty good person. I met a lot of people that went right to hell, I'm sure, that were really good people. They just didn't care much about God. They lived moral. They cared about what other people thought about them. They didn't want to get in trouble. They didn't want to have a bad name. They did good things. But the Holy Ghost, when he cleanses you out, he puts his ways in you. And that's a foreign concept to who you were before you were saved. It's kind of a foreign concept when you go to church and you look around you kind of look at Christianity as a whole. And the beginning point of all this is the Bible says you must renew your mind. It's not you should. He said you, it's a must. You must renew your mind. Well, how does that work? Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God only. When you read the word of God, truth is coming in. And it's piercing your spirit, man. It's renewing you. So when the devil starts talking the same game he's been talking since you were a little kid, you start recognizing his voice. I used to not recognize his voice. He never sounded like crazy. Hey, let's start smoking some weed. Hey, let's start running game on chicks and really mess them up. Then punk some of their dads out because you're bigger than they are. When hell comes to breakfast, 
He didn't talk like that. It was subtle. Normally came from my friends. Hey, man, you really, okay, dude, you, you, you're done watching porn? You ready for the next level? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. I'm for it. Tell me how it's done. This is how you do it. It was the devil's voice. I never recognized it because I didn't have any truth in me. So I did what the world did. There was some conviction getting high. I said, oh, man, I don't know if I like. I used to get high naturally. Man, I would skateboard all over. I'd ride my bike wherever. I'd run up hills just to get up the hill faster, get a head rush. I'd play every sport just to play sports. I, I had fun doing it. I didn't need drugs. But I got around these people who were doing drugs. And we had a commonality at first. We were into BMX. Then they started smoking pot. I'm like, nah, come on, man, smoke some pot. Come on, bro. Oh, let's do it. It wasn't bro then, it was dude. Everything was dude. Dude, come on. And, and at first I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Plus, when you guys get high, you're stupid. And you can't even get the job done. We're here to build jumps so we can ride them all week. Today's the day on Saturday when we have time to put in the labor and we enjoy the fruits of it all week long, jumping on these jumps. Now we're here to add another jump. And they're over here goofing around like a bunch of, yes, yeah, oh, drugs don't look good to me at 12. They don't look good. But I stayed in this environment and my mind wasn't renewed. I didn't know the truth that I had to flee. I was supposed to run from those situations. I was supposed to stand up and, and combat it. I didn't know any of these things. So soon I added drugs. And once you add drugs into your life, your life goes like this. It doesn't just kind of, well, it's just pot. He's setting up the infrastructure. You getting comfortable dipping, watching your back for the police, for your parents, lying about what you're doing, lying about what you're spending your money with, where you were. And then you get comfortable with it. And then the other drugs come along. Then you run into people who now do criminal stuff to support their drugs. He starts putting you in this realm of deception. Well, some people, you live pretty good. And your realm of deception is that you trust in yourself. You think of yourself as a good person. You declare yourself as a righteous person. You're lying to yourself. You're in the same deception as a drug user. You're deceived. The devil deceives the whole world. The prince of the power of the air is now at work in everyone who's disobedient. Disobedient to what? Not Maricopa County laws and your family according to God's ways. Though you might have done everything right according to your family, according to your job, according to your schools, God's ways are far above our ways. As a man, you're the spiritual priest of your household, and your job before you have any other ministry is training your children, leading your wife, not doing whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, taking them to church, thinking that I'm going to get them spoon-fed over here. No, that doesn't work. It's your job. So we got to renew our minds. You got to read the word. And then you got to wrestle with the word. Because the word calls you to do some things that are hard. And it makes you need God at a level you didn't need God before. You can't do it by yourself. You got to come to the master who will begin to shape and mold you into the image of Jesus Christ. So I, my deliverance started pretty fast. I got saved in 1994, about February 20th. And uh, I let lion spirits into, my, into me. I was a salesperson. I was a ticket scalper. I was a super salesperson. I'd put the sales pressure on a salesman. I'd make car salesmen look slow. And uh, my buddy started making hundreds of thousands of dollars. I was playing college football. We'd been doing ticket scalping since we were 14 years old. And all of a sudden he gets the new bins. And he gets the Rolex. Then he got the beach side or the, uh, the lakeside condo. Oh, man. And now he's got a little team of tagalongs, little mini entourage. And I remember one day he was making all this cash, and I was playing college football, so I couldn't travel all over the country unless it was off season or Christmas break. And I remember football was over, 
And I remember a thought coming through my mind, and I wasn't able to differentiate my thought from the devil's thoughts. And the thought said, hey, do you want what he wants? I said, oh, yeah, I want that. He said, then learn what he does. And he lied to people so bad I wasn't comfortable with that. I said, okay, we're just going to join the game, taking advantage of people who are stoned, rock and rollers are stoners, so we're going we're gonna to line up at the box office and all 50 of us work together, though we hate each other. We'll work together come the two-hour flow of the traffic coming to the event. Hey, it's sold out now. We all work in tandem, jacking the price, giving false numbers. I started making the money. That's when the spirit came in. I didn't know you'd get demons from lying. So I'd been doing it for about a year, maybe a year and a couple months. And I'm with Brother Steve. He, he, Mike discipled him. He's, he came through this ministry, still working a little here and there with this ministry. Good man of God. He led me to the Lord. And I'm sitting at his house, and we just got done ripping everybody off at the Rolling Stones because... The Saturday was sold out, but the Friday wasn't at Pasadena Rose Bowl. So I just took advantage of everybody as they were stoned and drunk going to the party. And just they would just hand you cash. It was the easiest business. And uh, I come home to his house, rather, and he starts talking the Bible. And I didn't really talk much Bible. I'd been saved uh, for about a year, like I said. And uh, I, didn't, I went to church a little bit, but I kind of went to these mainline churches where I don't still to this day remember one thing they said. I mean, it was this Mickey Mouse show, if you ask me. And uh, the Holy Spirit talks to me. And he says, all liars go to hell. I instantly sit up. I was sleeping on his couch. I heard this voice. And I begin to repent. I said, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I've been lying all the time. I've been lying all night. My pockets are full from lying. Forgive me, Lord. God is my witness. I start growling. I've never done it since, ever. All my deliverance afterward. Something's, And Steve's an African-American guy, and he's a little quick twitch and fidgety a little bit. He he comes out, and he's looking at me like, what's going on, man? Oh, Steve, all wires go to hell. Oh, I don't want to go to hell. He's neck deep in sin. He's lying too. But he's born again. He said, dude, I don't know what to do for you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, and it leaves. I thought I shook. But he said, no, you didn't shake. I didn't say one word that night. I said, hey, can we talk about this later? That's all I said. I didn't bring it up for 10 years until we started going through deliverance here. I keep smoking weed in my mind. I said, okay, hey, you can't smoke three times a day. You get stupid. All my friends who smoke weed three times a day are stupid or they're slipping in some major area of their life. So I mainly smoke weed on the weekends when I wasn't doing anything or on my off day. And I'm watching TBN. I'm thinking, well, I haven't been to church for a while. And I turn on and there's some big guy up there and he's kind of cool. And I don't remember one thing he says. But he turns the mic over to some little guy. And I used to judge everybody by the way you looked. If you're a small man, I I would say, I wish you luck, dude. I hope you make a lot of money so you can enjoy life. (laughs) And and I just, the way I thought, the way I was raised in in Nebraska, everything was about sports. If you're the good-looking guy in Arizona, you're up here. In Nebraska, the athlete is up here. The good dude, he's just in the middle rung. Athletics was number one. And he introduced this little guy. I said, oh, man, you, you got this big crowd. You should have kept the mic, man. This was your night. You were on. And I introduced this guy. I said, okay, what's he got to say? Well, I remember every word he, he said. He said, God sent me. And I remember I was boss. Ooh, God sent you? That's bold. Saying that to people. I already been delivered from lying. I know how serious it is to lie. You better not be lying up there on that pulpit. He said, I'm here because some of you out there have been saved and you live the same way as you used to live. And your problem is you got no fire from the Holy Ghost. He says, I'm going to pray for you to get the fire of the Holy Ghost so you can live the life God called you to live. 
Then he goes, and if you're watching, I want you to come to the altar, and I'm going to pray for you. If you're watching this on TV, he says, I want you to put your hands on the TV, and I'm going to pray for you. Now, verses are coming to my mind. I, oh, Lord, you're not subjected to time nor space. I'm going to pray from right here in the comfort of my recliner. But something was compelling me to come, and all these people were coming. So I made my way over, and I shut the blinds. I went over and locked the door, and I got down on my knees, and I was waiting for him to tell me to put him on there. And he says, okay, put your hands on the TV. And he begins to pray, and he says, now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And this power came through me that was, it was like nothing I felt to this day. And he never said anything about deliverance. He never said anything about devil come out. When the Holy Ghost came in, I knew instantly when I, when I got up, drugs were driven out of my body. I was the type of person I liked doing drugs. I came over to your house, and I liked you. I'd look through your medicine cabinet. If you had a bunch of oxys, I'd be kind to you. Only take two. That's all I needed for the evening. <laughs> Might need a couple beers to go with it, but I'm not going to be greedy and just steal it all. But I did drugs whenever I could. I went to the dentist. I was real nice to him. And I gave him the wink. Doc, I'm real sensitive to pain, making sure he was going to load me up. And uh, my wife would get some kind of cough syrup, you know, hydrocodone. She's like, it's gone. What happened to it? I just drank it. I had a drug spirit that came in when I was 12 years old. And when the Holy Spirit came through me, I knew when I got up, drugs were out of my life. He drove them out by the power of Jesus Christ. But I started calling my lukewarm friends. And I started telling them. And the first three or four times I was crying while I was telling them. And all they could go back to, hey, tell me again the last time you were smoking weed. Now, where did you get that weed? Was it the first time you ever smoked that weed? Did you know the person that you smoked that weed? Did all the buds in that bag look the same? They're trying to figure out what kind of drugs I was on. I said, you're not understanding. I'm done with drugs. The Holy Spirit came in me, and he drove drugs out. So since my lukewarm friends couldn't understand it, I didn't dare testify to the church about it. One thing I learned about people is don't put yourself out there and make yourself look bad. People tend to hold it against you, and there's no sense going to this new Christianity where you don't know much, putting your, safe, your name out there in a negative light. So I kept it to myself. Well, I was supposed to testify. I, I, but they were all ignorant. They were good Christians. They all loved God. They weren't getting no deliverance, though. And the devil put a hard beat down on them in the last 15 years. I'll tell you that much. So there's deliverance when you get saved. It says, if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing and whom the God of this age has blinded their minds. The minute you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he has taken a spirit out of your mind. It's real. You, you know it by watching uh, Nacho Libre when uh, he was evangelizing to uh, Ignacio and he would instantly bark, I believe, in science. And he was trying to get him baptized. If you don't know the movie, you're really missing out. It's a good one. It's not Holy Ghost anointing, but it's good. People are always saying, oh, I don't believe that. No, I don't believe that. No, I don't believe in religion. Religion was made by man to create control over man. I mean, they just bark things that the demons put in their mind. Some of them were put down when they were kids, when their fathers and mothers were telling them there was no God. The demons came right in their minds. Unabated, they were invited in. The power of life and death are in your tongue. You speak those things and the demons come right in your kids. Now you got saved and you're wondering what's happening with your family. You got to go through some deliverance. So there's also deliverance when you get filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a fear spirit that keeps everybody back from ministry at some level. Well, look at yourself. Man, look at your hairstyle. That's a bad hairstyle. How are you going to minister with a hairstyle like that? Man, you got to look like Rod Parsley from the, 19, from the 80s, man. You got to talk like a gem and look like a prince to be in ministry. He'll just tell you anything he's got to tell you to try to get you to sit on back down. So when the Holy Spirit comes, many times there's a deliverance and you get excited. 
about God and you start moving forward in a way you never moved before. That's a level of deliverance without a shadow of a doubt. But all these things are merciful and gifts at the same time. But the reality is, when we sin knowingly, and you override your Holy Spirit conviction, he says, stop complaining. Stop being so negative. Hey, you need to stop lusting after women. Hey, you need to stop looking in. You need to stop those chat rooms. You need to stop dating these people. You need to stop smoking weed. You need to stop going. And you override the Holy Spirit. He gives you grace. Sometimes it's one time. It's a hundred times. He told you. Then the demons come in. You reap what you sow. It came up. And now it's bearing fruit. And the devil is a masterful deceiver. So he's deflecting the blame on yourself or somebody else. He's not going to take the heat for that. He's too, he's too good of a liar. He's blaming somebody else or he's condemning you for what he drove you to do. And he exposed you for your lack of knowledge. He exposed you for your lack of discernment. He exposed you for your lack of fight. And he got in there. Now you got to bind them. Now you got to loose them. Now you got to root them out, undam them. You got to cast them out yourself. And you got to keep going. There's this really nice lady. These ladies have been coming on Thursday and they've been getting a lot of great deliverance. But last night, Holy Spirit hits everyone and everyone's going through deliverance. And she's sitting there kind of pouting, kind of mad, frustrated. And I said, sister, what are you working on? What, what, what's happening with you? She goes, my life has changed since I came here. My whole goal was to buy a cabin up north and to retire and to have this good life doing what I wanted to do with my life. But I've been going through deliverance and I've been compelled to give up those dreams and to serve people. But now I've been fired unexpectedly for no reason, which they can't even tell me a reason, which is odd. And now I'm dealing with all this heat. And I said, hey, you're down to the strong man now. You're down, you're down to the one who's calling the shots in your life. Oh, this one's no joke. For me, it was a lust demon. And when I had that dream, there were some things I had to clear out. One was always fighting. I could fight with anybody. It's hard to fight with Mike. But I've probed him a few times, seeing if he wanted to give it a go. <laughs> I was I would quarrel with anybody. Now, I don't want to physically. I'll just, we'll, we'll just go fact for fact. We'll go blow for blow. We'll see what you got. We'll just defend your position. It was I was always just willing to quarrel with people. I, I was fine doing that. We could stop drinking and just have a big argument until someone cracks, and I could go home if I was the winner, happy like there was a victory. Or I could lose and go home mad, kicking the whole way home. God said, that's got to die. That's a spirit. We were going through this remodel. Oh, it was great, man. All these people were coming out. Kelly and Arnie and all the staff was painting and cleaning. And, and I had a dream. It was in this building. We, and I walked in and there was a room that we didn't know was here. Like a, and I went in there. It was all dusty. And there was the fighting. And I had to speak to it and say, hey. We bought this place. I used to have a. We used to. Uh, I used to work for a foreclosure company. I'd have to knock on the door and let people know, "Hey, I'm sorry. There's going to be no refi. It's not bank owned anymore. We own it. We're going to give you a week, and you got to go." I, I was telling the fighting, "You got to go now. This belongs to the Church of God." Then all of a sudden, there was this beautiful burn, and this lady, kind of deviant, kind of trampy, a little bit gave me a, a gun and said, will you kill that bird for me? The bird was the Holy Spirit. The deviant woman was the sexual perversion. You don't have to wrestle with these thoughts. Now, the reality is, when you see a woman as a man, God gave you this DNA, design. You don't have to look at it and wonder, 
I don't know if I like this. You know, how's this going to go down? There's the DNA of humanity with the same as what he put in a whale that will go from the Pacific Ocean around California, and he'll head up during spawning season up to Hawaii. It's a DNA. When you see nakedness, something triggers. Well, that's on you, man. That's not me. It's on you and him. Don't fool yourself. You're not to show your glory. And what I was always doing was, well, hey, I'm fine. I'm not watching porn. Hey, I'm fine. I'm not talking to her. I'm not trying to get her number. I'm good. But I would, I would drink it up if it was too much. You know, middle of the road, I, I could, could make my way on back. I used to play D lineman. I knew how to get by some things. But if it was too much, I folded under the pressure. Bikini coming into the sauna, co-ed sauna. I wouldn't get out of there. Took took Brother Steve. And we got done playing basketball. About, we were about 45 at the time. So when you play three or four games of full court hoops, you go right to those saunas. That's what those are for, old people. They're trying to work out. And so we're in that sauna. Oh, here comes this beautiful woman. She's got a robe on. And I know it's, as you can see it's a bikini. And she's coming. I'm thinking, oh, this is one of those freebies. Hey, I'm not looking. I'm not in the wrong place here. And, I, and Steve, get up. Let's go. What are you doing? Get up. Get up. I'm so fast. Immediately. Let's go. And he almost <laughs> everything but grabbed me by the hand to get me out of there. It was just as extreme. And he sits me down and he goes, don't you understand? You can't give that devil an inch. Don't you understand? It took the chastening of the Lord. And Steve, he'll tell you his testimony. I'm not telling his business. He was the biggest fornicator I ever met in my life. He traveled the seven seas to find women. Literally. Not figuratively. <laughs> But when he went through deliverance, he was single. And he had to go to a whole nother level of holiness in his sexuality where I'm a married man. Sex is permissible. That's what he gave it for. We got three kids. We bore fruit that that, that stuff, that sex is good. And I had never went to that level of holiness. He had to. He was single. He knew he had to kill that or it would run him all around the world, literally like it did before. Sometimes you need a good chastening from a brother or sister. You got to change your life. Not in a, I was changing it in a degree that I was comfortable with. Hey, no, no girls knew my number. I didn't go to church looking at chicks and positioning my family. No, family, let's head on over here to the left. I wasn't doing that. Suddenly, oh, once in a while, once a month, when something would come, you got to flee fornication. You got to run, the Bible says. All other sin a man does is outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. That's why the devil taught every kid to be a pervert. There's no way you don't lose. I mean, you got to be some kind of freak when you're sitting around the locker room and you're sitting around the locker room, there's bigger kids in you. When you're the big dog, you can make the choices. You can, you can run that locker room. But you come in in seventh grade in Nebraska, it's seven through nine is junior high, and you come in and there's some, there was the kids literally 18 years old just wanting the free lunch and hanging out at the school and playing hoops. They had to implement some rules that you could only be a certain age. They were 18 playing high school or junior high basketball. So you're learning the pecking order of how things go down. You see a few people get thumped down really bad, you get your face swole. And then someone breaks out the pornography. Well, you, 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 man, the lowest denominator you could be called was gay. So that was one thing you fought against. You did not want someone... Because even though they probably didn't think you really were, it was just the way to punch you constantly in the stomach. So when they break that stuff out, you indulge yourself out of fear of the masses. I don't want someone to think I'm gay. Hey, I don't want to not fit in. Hey, I want to 
Then you start making the oohs and the ahs like everybody else, even though you look at it and you're kind of wrestling inside yourself with the, with the turmoil that, hey, this is wrong. Hey, there's something happening here spiritually. I don't know what this is, but you keep saying these things that you're not feeling. Almost like an invitation to these lust demons. Then these guys who are already having relations with women are telling you how it's like, which is all a complete lie. I know, I've tried a whole bunch of times. It's all made up in men's fantasies. Porn is not made by women. If they are, boy, they're close to mental illness. That is a pervert man fantasy. That's not how it works. And now you're equipped for a couple years, and he sends you out now. And men all know the M.O. We got to introduce the alcohol. And the devil in the 80s made a perfect recipe for it. Wine coolers. Girls, they couldn't drink stiff alcohol. They didn't like beer. But a wine cooler tasted like some Kool-Aid with liquor in it. And the demons come in. They take over your sexuality. That woman that was up there in, in that room of my life was what they call a spirit wife. They own your sexuality. Before I came in here, a guy was telling me he was lying with his girlfriend, not married. And some female spirit hugged him in the back and whispered in his ear his name. And I said, hey, maybe this will help you fight him a little bit more. There's no... Female angels, they're all male. You just had your first homosexual experience, buddy. Maybe that'll help you fight demons. He wasn't even alarmed that a spirit was whispering in his ear. You got to flee fornication. You got to run. It gets people into so many, so much trouble. It's unbelievable. I know my buddies that tried to marry girls because they had the most incredible bodies, and everyone said, dude, don't do it. And there's a guy code, and if other guys had had sexual relations with her, you're not supposed to tell. But we all knew, like, she's not what you think she is. Don't marry her. They did it anyway. Hell came to breakfast. In jail five times on a false accusation. I mean, hell. My buddy paid child support when he took care of the child and she manipulated and said, hey, I had the child. And since she took all the government funding, the government came looking for the repayment from him. And he lost in court and went to jail and paid 50,000. Going to parties, office parties, and other people's wives would touch other men sexually when they would drink. I didn't bring my wife to those places. I'm not stupid. I was, yeah, I worked there. I wasn't going to bring my family there. No way. We all know we got to guard our wives. We all understand we got to guard our children. You got to guard yourself. Because the demons are coming in through you. You start logging on to porn, man, you, I, those spirits are in the house. I mean, they used to do this thing. I used to read it in the New Times. Down this neighborhood, probably more towards downtown, downtown, crack sales were so prominent that they used to shoot a flare into the sky, and all the crackheads would know which block was selling the crack in Phoenix. Could you imagine if we just started firing the, the, and having all our doors open? What would be left in this house when we came back? There'd be no audio-visual equipment. Somebody would find a way to sell this thing. This would probably be worth two bucks down at Circle K. Every chair would be gone for sure. Those would be down at Swap Mart come Sunday. They'd steal everything. That's what the devil does. He comes only to steal, to kill and destroy. He's not there just to get in and cause you a headache, cause you some trouble, waste your time. He's there to take everything. And he's got to give you some kind of pleasure. You don't do drugs because it feels bad. I didn't keep smoking weed because, oh, man, this is a real downer. No, I liked it. 
You don't, you don't watch porn and have sex with women that aren't your wife or men that are not your husbands because it feels bad. You do it because it feels good. But Proverbs says there's a way that seems, it says sin rather tastes sweet like honey, but then it turns on you like gravel in your mouth. So we got to keep going with our deliverance. You've had some, of course, you're a born-again Christian. He's a good and kind and merciful God. But you don't get these last ones out, these real controllers, until you fight, until you got some fight in you. Amen. They're not going to come out. The Lord knocked the strong one out on an altar call. You, you're, it's a process. And if you don't go through the process, most likely you'd just pick it up in a month. He'd be back in there running the show again. He's got to instruct you. You've got to see that deliverance is good. Hey, there's some freedom here. Hey, there's some liberty. Hey, I'm, uh, there's not some temptation that, that was there before. There is some fruit here. I can look down the road, and though I don't see what I want, I believe it's down there. I'm going to keep going that way. In Luke chapter 10, it says the 70 returned with joy. Jesus sent them out two by two on a missionary journey. They returned with joy. And the thing that strikes them, to me, it would have been leprosy. I mean, you get a guy nubbed up, no legs, no feet. Someone's rolling him around on some kind of makeshift cart. And you get that guy restored and some limbs regrow. That, that's going to be the talk of the night for me. But what amazes these men, though they saw the blind eyes open, the deaf ears open, they saw the lame walk, the lepers cleansed, they said, even the demons are subjected to us in your name. And he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, and behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing by no means shall harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, but that the spirits are subjected to you, but rather rejoice your names... Are written in heaven so all the rejoicing of a Christian is I'm safe I'm not going to hell Jesus paid my price in full on the cross of Calvary he shed his blood for the remission of my sins I'm not found in my perfect life and my own righteousness I'm found in the righteousness of Christ who lived the perfect life before the Father on my behalf that's where you rejoice casting out demons is just a part of the dirty work Oh, it's great leading people to Jesus. It's the funnest thing to do in ministry. It's fun going in the jails and these guys get saved. It's the majority of them are Catholics. And they, they want God now. You're in trouble. And so you, you go to church. You, they put two and two together. That's what religious people do. You need God. You better go to church. And they sit amazed when the gospel's being preached. When you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. It's great. Deliverance is great too, but it's a process. And some take off like rockets. Whew. Kelly was one of them. She took off like a rocket. Me, I took off sideways, but I thought it was like a rocket. <laughs> so people like me, it goes a little bit slower. Some people can take right off and never look back. They take the word at face value, they hear it, and they do it. They're grateful, and as they keep walking down that road of gratefulness, rejoicing their names are written in the book of life, he delivers you from everything else that's in there. Amen. It's, it's, it's the way we should all do it. But we got free will. So it's up to us. Are you going to keep going? Are you going to keep fighting? Are you going to keep resisting the temptation? I've seen things, it's, it'd be hard for you to believe it. I won't even tell you. The temptation he's thrown my way, you probably wouldn't even believe it. But he'll show you, once you know who he is, he's playing with a whole lot bigger chips. And he's willing to put them in to, for you to stop doing what you're doing. Amen. When you get saved, he's got the rest of your life just to thump on you. Send you a couple false teachers, give you a few false prophetic words, 
take a few letdowns, discouragements, beatdowns, disappointments, let you taste some gross failures. Oh, he'll get you to accuse God. He'll throw those thoughts in you again and again and again. He's got time to whittle you down. But once you know you're fighting the devil and not yourself, he don't like that. Because now you fight in a position of the verse I just read in Luke. I give you power and authority over the devil. You put him there. You put lies down there. You put this negative emotions towards other people down there. You put discouragements and fault findings down there. You put religiosity down there. You push your hatred. You put it down there. You force it down there. He don't like that. So you cannot, what the Bible says, you can't give place to the devil. You can't do it. You can't afford it. Oh, but see, preacher, I'm going to marry her. It's all good. We're having sex, but hey, it's, it's, it's like, hey, I'm, we're basically married anyway. We've made a covenant with each other. No, he's too smart for that. He gave you that idea. You didn't get that from the Word of God. You didn't get that from the man of God or the woman of God. You got that from somewhere else. And the scary fact is, if that voice got over on you there, where else has he gotten over on you? How bad is this thing really? Because when people come into the counseling sessions, you only want to say so much. Although I met a guy yesterday who wasn't that type of guy. He told me everything. I didn't even flinch. Inward I did. I didn't do it ex out here. He was done with the devil. So I'll go ahead and tell you everything. I got to kill it all. Every bit. High and low. Left and right. I got I to gotta get rid of it. He's taking everything now. But most people don't want to do that. Most people don't even know they're doing that. They're lying to themselves. That's how powerful the devil is. He'll get you to believe a lie you told yourself. I used to do it all the time. Man, this is the last time I'm getting high. We got to start training. Football's coming in two months. This is time to put in some work. Man, there's one month left. I'm going to make it count double time now. I missed that last month. This is it. This is last night, boys. We'd even make a handshake on it. We'd make up our own handshake. Most of those cool handshakes... Those were like ones where you were making a promise that you were never going to fulfill. Had all kinds of them. Oh, man, we're just going to have to not get high now in the season. We got to say, so it's season now. We got, we got camp, two a days for the next two weeks. Let's get ourselves in shape. Oh, man, this devil's a liar. Getting high the whole season. promises this is the last time i'm watching porn oh you tell yourself that one you better be down here at the deliverance center there is no one more time with the devil you got to get down on your knees and you got to first repent to god that devil's too powerful you got a harem of women four or five hundred of them at your fingertips you got to get down there and make apologies to the lord the battle belongs to the Lord. It don't, belong, it don't belong to you. You led yourself into that snare and that trap of the devil. And the only way out is through Jesus Christ. And then once he gives you some godly sorrow, now you can fight. If you don't care about sin, if you don't care about hurting God, it's going to be a long road and a bumpy one. When deliverance comes along, people start freaking out. Sinners do it. Watch this in Luke chapter 8. Then they sailed across to the country of the Gadarenes, the opposite of Galilee. When they stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. It tells you one thing. You don't get them out, it gets real bad. It takes a while for them to start manifesting. I don't know if they could manifest right away. Some seem to. 
or they got to web themselves down in there with their network. They got to get the lying spirit. They got to get the grumbling and complaining spirit. They got to find the fault finder where you take an offense with somebody or hate somebody. I don't know if they're just strategically taking their time, but the longer they're in there, this man proves it's, it's way worse. He wore no clothes. He didn't live in a house, but he lived in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out, he fell before him. And with a loud voice, he said, what do we have to do with you, Jesus, the son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it often seized him. And he was kept under guard and bound in chains and shackles, but he broke the bonds and he was driven by the demons into the wilderness. You can get some super freaky strength and some crazy power from these demons, boy. They're nasty. I always look at the sex offenders on AZ Central, that's the Arizona Republic, because I'm kind of looking at my future uh, congregation. I preach to the sex offenders in Maricopa County, so before you go to prison, unless you've got a lot of money for bail, you come on down to my service. Well, you come on down to the pod, and hopefully you come to my service. And this guy was overtaken and... He raped a 12-year-old. The guy was good-looking. The guy had a wife. This was a babysitter who was watching his little kids. Anybody who has kids knows it's not about you, Jack. It's about these kids. You can't, you, you got to take care of them. All that was totally put under control of the devil, and he made him do his will. He's going to go to prison. I know those cases. That's about 20 years in prison. Those kids, the likelihood you never see them again because they don't like sex offender dads. Not too proud of them. Demons are powerful. He'd, he admitted to the police and said in the report he was addicted to porn. And one day the spirits took him over. Do you think that doesn't happen to Christians? 100% it does. Jesus asked him, so notice Jesus told it to come out once, and it doesn't come out. He says, do not torment me. He says, and he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. That's verse 29. Then Jesus is talking to him in verse 30, and Jesus asked him, saying, what's your name? So if it were legion for many demons that entered him, that was thousands of demons. He picked up thousands of demons. And the legion, because many demons had entered him, and they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. A herd of swine was feeding in the mountain. They begged him that he would permit them to enter them. He permitted them, and the demons went out of the man. They entered the swine. The herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. Now those who fed saw them what had happened, and they fled and told it to the city and to the country. They went in to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man who had the demons that had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus. He was clothed and in his right mind, and watch what happens. And they were afraid. They were afraid. What happened? Their fear spirits triggered. Why would you, someone who's terrorizing the, the neighborhood, breaking chains, running around butt naked, I would be fearful of that guy. I mean, he's a danger to society. He's danger to women and children. He's danger to men. He can break chains. And now he's sitting there clothed in his right mind. I guarantee you all the cuts, all the open flesh wounds, I guarantee you they were all healed. Somebody probably washed him up, put some oil on his head, gave him some nice clothes, and the demons and the people freaked. How do you know this? Because the Son of God is standing right in front of them. And the multitude of the surrounding region of the Gadareans asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. And he got in the boat, he returned. Demons don't like being kicked out. There was a couple sitting in here. The one girl was highly demonized. They bolted before the service started. The demons freaked. 
you got to overcome your demons of fear. They'll lie to you. They'll tell you anything to get you to stop fighting them. Church people freak at demons too. Watch this. Luke 11, 11 through 23, he says, or actually 14, he says, and he was casting out a demon and it was mute. So the demon has a symptom. He had a demon and it was mute. Now he couldn't speak. I mean, I'm sure they put him in a nice little Judean uh, school in a program trying to teach him how to speak. I'm sure the elders came down and prayed for him, but he had a demon that was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out, the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled, and some of them said, he cast out demons by Beelzebub, the rulers of the demons. They're freaking and calling the man who just set this man at liberty a miracle. They're calling him the devil. They don't even bother calling him anymore, as far as I know. At least it doesn't get any reaction to whoever works the answering machine. But 10 years ago, or 9 years ago, when I first started coming here, they used to call all the time and rip Mike. But mostly, they had a little bit of justification. Because some newbie come on down here and got him a little bit of deliverance. And he started, stopped masturbating, watching porn. He started, quit smoking meth. And he started talking to his pastor about how he was doing everything wrong. And that he had missed the key to everything, which was deliverance. And this is a guy who prayed you, had all kinds of problems, helped you pay your bills, came down and visited you in jail, prayed you through a bad where your wife was leaving. And then you come hurling an accusation at somebody else ignorantly. You got to walk real slow with your deliverance. Because that devil ain't playing around. It says, hey, foolish is the man that begins to build the house, but he doesn't count the cost. And everybody who walks by and sees that half, that half built begins to ridicule him. You don't plan on going through all your deliverance? You don't plan on fighting these devils to the day you die. People are going to walk by and they're going to laugh at you. Oh, he was talking a big game about demons. Oh, he was kicking them out. Oh, he was Holy Ghost now. We weren't Holy Ghost. He was Holy Ghost. You testify of the mercy of God with a grateful heart. I'm not telling you not to testify. But you stay humble. And you know you're in the process. And there's not one person, in my knowledge, been all the way delivered in one shot. Jesus, in this place, Jesus had to tell that demon twice to come out. That's the Son of God who had the Holy Spirit with, without measure. For others were testing him, and they sought a sign. Now give us another sign. You cast him out, cast the demon out. Give me another sign. He, knowing their thoughts, said to him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. A house divided against itself falls. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? But you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, who do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they'll be your judges. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. So demons are cast out, not by some man, not by some anointed ladies. It's always by the finger of God. He says, when a strong man is fully armed, he guards his own palace. His goods are in peace. But one stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted, and he divides his spoils. He was not with me is against me. And he who does not gather with me, he scatters. The strong man got to have his goods spoiled. His goods are you doing sin. His goods are you doubting God, not moving by faith, not laying hands on the sick, seeing them recover. The, the strong man is keeping you from going to the world and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to every creature. The church is so beat down that the world doesn't see any different between a Mormon, a born-again Christian, and a Jehovah Witness. It's all religion to them. And so they want to wipe us out, and they're getting close. 
Once they wipe you off YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and all those social media modalities, because God forbid you offending everybody. We've been giving kids trophies when you get last place for the decade now. We're reaping what we've sown. Not giving it when we don't spank our children. We just love them as he's cussing you out. <laughs> demanding you give him some money for some more monster energy. He's tweaking even as a little kid. Now they've grown up. And you can't tell me what, I, what I'm doing is wrong. That's against the rules of humanity. Key point in your deliverance. You, it's not you, it's them. You're not fighting people. It's not them, it's the demons. Don't get confused. When someone has tried to pray and tried to fast and tried personal edification and you still can't change for more than a month, by definition, 100%, you need deliverance. James chapter 1.12 says this, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when the desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. You're going to die if you don't stop sinning. Yeah. Death rate amongst humans is 100%. So is Jesus and, and Elijah. You're going to die. And it'll happen real fast. Statistics on drug users, they live to be in their late 50s. I heard, I don't know the stats, but I heard that homosexuals that lived it as a lifestyle die in their late 50s. The average male American only lives to be 80 years old. He will take decades off your life, for real. So when you're tempted, the devil's tempting you with something that he watched you. He watched you. And he saw what kind of person you were. I got two sons. One's 21, one's 19. They're completely opposite. One could care less what people think about him. You don't like him, he don't even care. Somebody kicked trash on him at school from the second story, and everyone laughed. He didn't even care. I wanted to go over there and smack somebody down. He didn't even care. Just rolled with it. My other son, oh, he cares about everybody, how they feel. He wants to be known as someone that does things right. Oh, he's worried about everything. He's even worried about his grades. Doesn't want to let the teachers down. And they watch you, and they see what kind of sin nature you got. You got a sin nature. Sin came into the world through one man, Adam. Therefore, death reigns in all men. You have a sin nature. You can't blame that on the devil. He's working with your sin nature that you never crucified and followed Christ for your liberation. You gave place to that sin nature. You justified it. Well, I've been picked on all my life. I was raped when I was nine. You're 50 now. You're 50. I know it was horrific. I'm not trying to make light of it, but you're 50 now. The grace of Jesus Christ covers a multitude of sin. Forgiven, you'll be forgiven. If you do not forgive, then I'll turn you over to the tormentors. You're living with demons because you won't forgive somebody that doesn't deserve it. I know they don't deserve it. You didn't deserve getting forgiven either. But he forgave you anyway out of his mercy and kindness. No, I was picked on. Everyone, No one ever liked me. Dude, keep complaining. No one will ever like you. <laughs> James chapter 1, 12, he says, oh, I read that part. He says, but when a 
full grown and gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation of shadow of turning. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be kind, a kind of first fruit of all his creatures. You're supposed to be somebody special. You don't just get saved so you can go on to glory, you selfish little person. You're supposed to be some kind of special person to God that he can actually use as an ambassador. You can actually use your arms and legs to do something for him. If everyone was getting healed at the Christian church and there was an anointing that could break the yoke of all these diseases that come upon the sexual pervert in whatever shape or fashion and they could get healed there and some got this transformation power and came back and loved their community because wherever you're from, that's where you go back to. That's who you had the most influence over. And they would go back and they would be the light of Christ. They would still... In their heart, hate Christian, but they wouldn't have anything evil to say, and they wouldn't try to stop it. But all they see is Christianity is a bunch of hypocrites, a bunch of bigots, a bunch of narcissists, that they found the secret sauce, and they're the only ones that can partake of it because of their holiness. So they don't even try to enter in and be like that. But if you actually moved with the anointing of the Holy Ghost on a regular basis, the churches would be a hospital. It would be a place of refuge. It would be a place where you could bring the people who were sick and busted and get their minds back. They'd have a sense of awe and respect for the church. So we don't need to be nitpicking how other people view the church. We got to rise up ourselves and do something different so they can change their perspective. Second Corinthians 11 says this in verse 3. It says, I fear that by any means that the serpent, as he beguiled Egypt, I mean Eve, through his uh, subtlety, your minds should be corrupted by the simplicity that is in Christ. It's childlike faith. I, I got to just trust God. I, I don't have to live in bondage. I, I might lose all my friends. I don't know what it's like to lose all my friends, but I believe you'll give me some good friends. Maybe I don't need 50. Maybe I just need a couple good ones who really care. Lord, I'm just going to trust you. i, I got to give up this job. I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills. I don't know if I'm going to lose the house. I'm, I'm just going to do the right thing and trust you. It's the simplicity of Jesus Christ. The devil always tries to make it complicated. Oh, before you can go through deliverance, you better fast a week. Oh, man, you better have quit smoking meth for a good month before you come on down to that altar. He's the one putting those type of requirements on you. Amen. You come as you are, the Bible says. And he says, by yourself, you can do nothing, so you better come as you are. And then he says, now I'll begin my word. Amen. He says, for if he cometh and preach another Jesus, in whom we have not preached, or you receive another spirit, which you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might be well to bear with him. There is another spirit. There's another gospel. There's another Jesus. But it's not, I hate to tell you, like these vice shows where some dude walks around in a robe and people, you know, follow him like he's Jesus. No, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the churches that worship the unseen false Jesus. Oh, they're happening all over. All over. And the false teacher under the false spirit tells you you don't have to repent. They're on TV. Well, I'm not going to tell anybody that. I don't feel that's my place. I just feel there's a better way. And plus, my wife might beat my butt when we get home. You're going to take a beating when the devil quits using you, buddy. There is no gospel of Jesus Christ unless you turn from yourself, unless you turn from sin. 
There is no God. There's some mercy. He answered a prayer. He helped you. You cried and you were broken. He just threw some comfort down. Oh, there's rain for the just and the unjust alike. The sun rises on the, on the just and the unjust alike. He's a merciful God, but you can't have eternal life doing what you want to do. Jesus said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. It's No servant is above his master. It's enough that he's like him. Everyone's going to struggle in their humanity. You don't want to do stuff. You don't want to change. I don't want to give this up. I, I, it's an easy road. There's a real estate market's booming right now. If I don't have faith in God to come on down here a few times a week, these checks are fat too, man. They're, they're keeping me fed. Ooh, this is what we all get. Me and you alike, right there. That those little food trays. There's no money here. No one's doing this for one dollar. Not Mike, not Kelly, not anybody. Not one dollar. You can't do that unless God said, I called you to do it. And whatever I call you to do, watch behind you. Everything you needed was behind you. you did you pay your bills? I paid my bills. Did you have new shoes for your kids? You had new shoes for the kids. Did you have, oh, did you have what? You had excess? You had even some to give to people who didn't have nothing? Oh, I promised I'd be faithful to my word. Amen. But we don't seek after the riches. The riches have a voice. Oh, it has a voice. I sit right there in that office. I got to wait sometimes in between clients coming. And that house went up for sale. And I knew when it was coming up for sale. When you're in the real estate, you look for signs. People moving boxes, renters being thrown out. In their case, they went to jail. Matter of fact, I saw them in jail. Came to two of my services in two different buildings. Imagine that one. And I went over there and I said, hey, you're selling this? He goes, yeah, I am. So how much you want for it? Well, I think it's worth this, this, and that. My hustle comes up. <laughs> and the hustle came to my mind. Now tell him why what he has isn't enough. Maybe you slow play him until you got the contract conveniently in your car or your back pocket. I said, no, nah, no, nah, okay, you know, uh, yeah, I think you're right about that price. Now, I'll take a shot. God want to give me a blessing. It could be an, I'm not, I should knock on doors, see which one opens. But I said, nah, it's not time for that. I don't have time for that project. There's temptations, even when you're not infected with demons. Everybody has temptations. Eve was tempted from the outside. Adam sinned when the demon was working from the outside. There wasn't nothing in him. He hadn't sinned. Cain is conspiring to kill his brother. There's no demons in him because Jesus comes down. And he says, Cain, do you not know that if you do well, you'll be accepted? But know this, if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is to have you. It's coming in. But you must rule over it. Keep it outside. He can't have what he wants if you do what is right. He doesn't do it. He takes a rock and he bashes his brother's brains in under the demonic power. The first demonically influenced murder on the planet. Now there's been millions and millions and million murders. Ephesians chapter 2, 1, he says, and he made you alive. You're not alive. You don't have any joy. He made you alive. He didn't make you ho-hum alive. I'm just going on through, heading down to the living center, see if I can't help some poor sap. No, people are valuable. When God calls you to do something, he'll open your eyes to see. I give eyes to see to those who want to see. I'll show you the value of a human. I'll let you see the fruits of somebody who walks righteous and goes on and bears much fruit. Some 30, 60, and 100 fold. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to go through life like everybody else. You got to see people that burn out. When the temptations come, you got to see some people that you preach to and the word just gets snatched right at them by the evil one. But I'll show you some good fruit so you know what you're believing for. He said, you're alive. You once were dead in your sins and trespasses. You're not supposed to be thinking death, expecting death. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works, and the sons of disobedience, and whom you all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and our mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. 
But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love in which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ, for it is by grace you've been saved. Listen, when he came and saved you when you're dead, you think he can't help you in your deliverance when you're just spiritually beat down, discouraged, and frustrated? You don't see any way out? You have voices in your head. You've got negative thought disorder. You're a sexual pervert. You're a drug addict. You're a quitter. You've never been able to complete anything of value. You don't think he works with dead people? He saved you when you were dead. It's a starting point for everybody. Got to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He works with repetitive thoughts again. And again and again, I was up in Flagstaff not too long ago when all these guys were out fishing for trout. And it's weird fishing for trout. I'm from Nebraska. We didn't have trout. You know, you threw in a lure. You kind of worked it for some, with some bass. Uh, you threw out some bobbers with some corn on it when you're looking for some carp. Those were always the easy catch as a kid. Uh, but a fly fisherman, he keeps throwing this fly on the string over and the fish can see it. And then he kind of sees some moving in the water a little bit. He knows one's enticed. And once he knows one's enticed, he lays it right down in front of him. And the fish thinks that he's caught something in the natural. He thought it was just flying back and forth like the other bugs. He thought, oh, this is my day. It's just laid up right here perfectly for me. But no, he snags him with the hook and reels him in. The devil just keeps throwing it at you again and again. He never stops. He'll never stop. He's just throwing it again and again. Negative thought disorder. You can do what you want. Hate this person. Hey, drugs don't matter. Hey, porn doesn't matter. Hey, it doesn't matter what you do. Hey, ripping the company off for hours every week. That doesn't matter. He's just throwing it, throwing it, throwing it. And if you listen to it long enough, kind of like me sitting as a 12-year-old kid amongst all the pot smokers, once you're around it long enough, and you know what? After a while, they didn't get that stoned. After a while, they could kind of function. It wasn't the big ordeal and the, the playground little runaround deal like it used to. It kind of settled down to a little bit more normal. You keep listening to this devil, it'll sound normal. It'll sound like your own thoughts. And then when you do it, you're thinking you're making your own decision, but you're making a demonic decision that allows him to come from crouching at the door to the position of having you. You got to be able to stand against these things. Renewing your mind helps you stand against a constant lie, a constant temptation of sin. I know the word of God. I'm supposed to flee fornication. I know the word of God. That drugs are pharmakia. They're they're in the destruction. I work in the jails. It's 80% people who did drugs. Some were rich. Some were poor. Some didn't care. Some cared. They all go to jail alike. That's where it all ends. In Matthew 24, 24, he says, false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, the elect. It's happening right now. Do you know, I don't want to get into politics, but if people are for abortion and they promote it, you could never check a box on there. I don't care if they're saving every whale and... Uh, they're going over to the seven seas, letting every poor person of the third world have a hut and an air conditioner. I, I don't care what great deeds they're doing. If you condone killing a human being, you can never vote for those people. They're demonic. I'm not saying the other person that's running isn't demonic. I'm saying someone who condones that is a demonically infected and influenced person. And you had a lot of preachers back in. Hillary Clinton. Some that could preach good. Got a, their website has teachings for days. You spend all your life listening to another one of their messages. And some are outright pretty darn good. Some are great. A lot better than I'm preaching here tonight. Sounds better anyway. And they can move. <laughs> They'll grab up. They'll get a real mic. Forget these clip-ons, man. I think if you got a real mic, you're doing something. You spin it on your hands. You got to learn how to look at the crowd and work it. Talking to you, sir. 
they were voting for Hillary Clinton and got up and told the congregation who they were voting for, which is a violation of your 501c3 government tax ID LLC as a church. Didn't care. I'm sure that anybody that was running the LLCs didn't care either. It says right here, they're going to be false. They're going to prophesy as false. They're going to have false Christ in their church. They're going to rise up and then they're going to start moving in signs and wonders. How easy would it be to hook all these millennials? All you got to do is tell somebody that the rock band when they play rock and roll Jesus music and this glory cloud comes down. And when you're done with the glory cloud, you got 14 karat gold on your forehead. We got to get there. They're drawn to that. Some smoke and some gold flakes. It says right here he's going to do deceitful working. He's going to do signs and wonders. That's not a wonder. A little smoke. You know a dude that went down to Ozzy Osbourne at Bank One Ballpark. He worked for me. He had been off meth for two years. He says somebody took a huge rip. This was before vapes were out took a huge rip of meth and blew it into the air and it went up and started curling around and coming into people. This dude, I'm telling you, there's people that walk this earth that are not human beings. I promise you that. The Bible says be careful how you treat a stranger because you could be entertaining an angel. The devil is fallen angels. You better be careful what you're doing. Make you wonder. I don't get it. That's a conspiracy theory. I'm not even going to watch on YouTube. It's, it's hieroglyphics. I can't figure it out. I don't want to figure it out. I'm just telling you, that was some sort of dude, at least superpowered with demons. Superpowered demons. And then the dude started smoking meth after being clear for a couple years. And he's a born again Christian for real. He can preach good. I saw him on YouTube. Matter of fact, he preach good. Demons came right down in him being in that environment. You, you, you can't go in these demonic environments. It'll cost you way too much. These are the last days. There's, there's going to be too much coming at you. People don't understand. The cartel was kicked out of the Catholic Church, and so they went to Santeria, and they worshiped Santa Morta, the black angelus of death. And they pray to this angel of death, and she requires sacrifices. That's why in Juarez, Mexico, they found thousands of dead bodies. They find pits of them by the hundreds. They're killing human beings to Santa Morta to get their drugs uh, undetected across the border. And now you do drugs and wonder why all these people are dropping dead and how he's upped it now, adding a little fentanyl. If you don't have fentanyl in your, in your heroin, kids don't even want to buy it, but it costs you your life. You're wondering why they're risking Life, just to get high, demons, they were prayed into those drugs. Oh, I'm just getting high. you got no idea the sacrifice those drugs engaged in to get here and to go into your arm. Craziness. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Stop being powerful in yourself. A powerful man and woman of God is someone who's learned to surrender to God and they walk in the power of his might. Well, that's a powerful man right there. That's an old battle saw. He's a battle axe. Oh, my goodness. You've got this thing twisted in your own mind. That's someone who walks not unwise but wise. That's someone who gets up every morning and knows they don't got it, but he's got it. And they ask him to be with him every single day. That's when you see someone moving in power. They didn't just get something from God. They might have got a gift that you get confused with power, but the gifts are given without reproach. There's many people moving in the gift of the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost already left. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You got to be able to stand up to this. You can't run. You can't duck. Yo, oh, I sin. I need help. I'll just sin Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Get back to the deliverance center on Friday. You've been sucking up time. That's dangerous. 
Jesus went to the tree and said, hey, parable, cut it down. Landowner, one of the caretakers says, let, let's just give it a little more time. Let me till around. Let me fertilize it. Let's, let's make sure it's got adequate everything it needs. Give it one more year before you cut it down. You coming in here wasting time? Are you kidding me? That's dangerous. Now everybody needs help. You keep coming. You keep coming. We always want you to come. But don't concede into sinning on Tuesday because you can't get your way out till Friday. Fight your way out. You know how to get help. There's no superman human beings. There's people who learn to trust him. You turn your mind and your heart over to the Lord and start trusting him and tell the demons to go. I've seen people come in here high. A lady came for counseling. She, she already had, I was like, how long has it been since you, uh, this was like my opening deal. How long has it been since you used meth? I didn't even look at the sheet. I just fired it up now. That's why I'm an hour late. Well, okay, uh, I guess I got nothing for you. Uh, we're going to have to ask God for something. Uh, Lord, we're going to need some mercy. We've seen people delivered from drugs, doing drugs before they came in here. If he'll deliver them, and you know about deliverance, and you've got a taste of the goodness, and you, you know what's real, when you're done sinning, and you get convicted, godly sorrow leads you to repentance. The minute you repent, you're eligible for deliverance. Don't go playing this little routine, oh, I'll sin tomorrow because I can repent on Wednesday, and then I'll cast them out come Thursday. Don't play games like that. That's dangerous. But the minute you're convicted, God gave you that conviction. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit, not to condemn you, not to ride you down and belittle you. It's to lead you to repentance change. I want to help you. I want to deliver you, but I'm not going to invade your space. I'm not going to make you do something you want to do. The Holy Spirit works on free will participants. The wiles is like putting a road map in your mind. <clears throat> the devil his name is Satan. The devil is the job description. The job description is he accuses you through thoughts again and again and again and again. Then once he gets these wiles working on you, he sets up a stronghold in you. Long after the, not too long after the stronghold, he starts oppressing you. After he starts oppressing you, he now moves you down to deception. Once you're deceived, you're in real trouble. But unless someone drug you here by your arm, nobody in here is deceived. You're oppressed, but you know there's hope. You came down here because there's something still in you that says, hey, I know God can help me. Hey, I've heard negative things about deliverance, but I've tried everything I can try. I can't let this go down all the way to deception. Once you're deceived, you don't know right from wrong. That's a dangerous place. That's, that's moving into schizophrenia. That's now moving into manic depression. That's now moving into uh, schizoaffective deception where you don't know right from wrong. Dangerous. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, First Peter, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion walking about, whom seeking who he can devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith. That's what he tells us to do right now. Resist him in the faith. Use your faith. God loves you. You could have never been born again and saved unless God loves you. You could have never been sanctified unless he deposited something in you to hunger and thirst after righteousness and after God. And then when you use your own free will and stepped out, you started encountering God. You can encounter God through deliverance in this place. You can finish your deliverance. But he teaches us. He teaches us how the devil works, how the devil thinks. Deliverance sometimes is a little bit slower. Uh, for some people, it doesn't matter. God will teach you all the way around. The, all the way through it. And what the devil means for harm, he's hindering you, he's slowing you up. You might become the best teacher out of all of us come and start preaching here. He's working all things for good for them that love God who are called according to his purpose. You sinning is not a part of his purpose. That's according to your own free will.
But what the devil meant for harm, he'll use it against the devil. He hates the devil. Most humans don't really hate him. They don't see how vicious he is. They don't see how nasty he is. They don't really see what he's done to their family. He doesn't really see what he'll do to their children. He's a stone cold killer. He's a savage and he never stops. And he's not like a human. He doesn't need to go to sleep. How do we disarm him tonight? He just got this new guy, won the heavyweight championship of the world. Forgot what his name is. Andy Ruiz. <laughs> now, this guy was throwing punches like you can't believe. I mean, they made sounds that Floyd Mayweather has never made in his life. I mean, there was thumps and cracks coming through the audio. But, hey, you want to tie him up hand and foot? Man, I'll mow that heavyweight champ down. It'll be me all day if he's got no hands and feet. I wouldn't want to take a chance to get in his hands, get his hands and his feet. I win. You tie up the devil hand and foot, you win. He says, I give you authority. A believer has authority. You don't need to be an apostle, a pastor, a preacher, a teacher. You don't have to be any of those qualifications to have the power. He says, I give it to the believer. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on this earth will be loosed in heaven. You bind his power and you loose his hold over your life. How do you loose his hold over your life? You repent. You forgive yourself and you forgive other people who wronged you and hurt you. And he's disarmed. Oh, he'll, he'll put on a show. There was one over here trying to put on a show. Somehow this lady picked up this witchcraft. One thing I learned, you start to hissing and howling, you're on your last leg. We don't need to hiss and howl back at you. He's ready to go. The devil's when he's got power, he don't say a word. He's got all the power. He's sitting over here nitpicking. Oh, this big bonehead guy thinks he knows something. He's an idiot. Now that's when the devil's got some power. Not when he's kicking up some dust, fussing and no, and smacking chairs with the elbow. No, that's he's ready to go. He's making his last ditch effort to stay inside you. He'll come out, bind him. You got the authority to bind him. You got the authority to loose him. But you don't got any authority over something you want. He's no dummy. I, I remember the coach at Arizona State. Uh, man, I can't even remember his name. Bruce Snyder. Bruce Snyder was a little wee little man. Never played any football. Boy, he had a big bite. And I remember him yelling at Shante Carver. Shante Carver was six foot six, two hundred and fifty pounds. Ran a four six forty. Was the number one draft choice of the Dallas Cowboys. And he was in there yelling at, "Hey, y'all, kick you right off this team." And we're like. Pfft. You ain't kicking no Shante Carver off the team. You're just barking. You don't mean nothing. You love Shante Carver. Your future's based on Shante Carver. It was all a show. You, the devil don't play the shows. He knows what's in there. He knows when you truly repent, there's a loosing. He's holding on to something. You kind of like misery. You kind of like sin. You kind of like hating people. You kind of like getting high even though you know it's wrong. You kind of like porn and lust. For the sake of God and your soul, you better now change your mind. And when you change your mind and you apologize to God, there's a loosing of the devil. Oh, you don't know that. Oh, he's been loose many times. You were in those anointed conferences. I don't knock those. I guarantee you that devil was loosed. But since you didn't know how to bind him and to command him to leave, he rolled right out into the parking lot with that anointing that came into your spirit, man. That devil was just hiding in your body. He was just hiding in your mind with a few lies he threw in there since childhood. And then the youngest Christian of us. So you've been saved five days. You're eligible to have authority over the devil. You've been saved for 60 years and only lived like a backslider for all 60. The minute you repent, you've got authority 
over the devil. God gave it to us. It's real. And then you command him to go. You don't got to yell at him. You tell him. With your lips, you tell him, I'm done, you're stealing my money. I'm done, you're stealing with my kids. I'm done, you're stealing with my mental health. I'm done, you robbing and kicking in my ministry. I'm done with you. I don't want to do this anymore. You lied to me. You said I like porn. I don't like porn. You put that in me when I was a little. I want that out of there. And he'll come right out. I'll show you how to do it. Stats hit the lights. Heavenly Father, of ourselves, we can do nothing. Lord, there's some streamers out there. I declare it's your day. Help those streamers, Lord. Help us, Lord, those who, my friends that came down tonight. Lord, we just ask for your peace to come. Many of us have been in turmoil and stress, and heartbreak, and loneliness. Many have been isolated. Lord Jesus, I'm asking for your peace to come in this place. By ourselves, we can do nothing. If anyone's delivered in this place, it's by the finger of God. We give you the glory, Lord, for the liberty. We give you glory for the salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We give you glory, Holy Spirit, that you never left us. Though we turned our back on you, you never left us. We give you glory and honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, today I want to apologize to you from my heart, Lord. I started conceding to the lies of the enemy. I was almost buying into quitting, Lord, but you wouldn't let me quit. I'm sorry, Lord, for entertaining these lies of the devil. Lord, I've been infiltrated with demons and demonic thoughts ever since I was a kid. And I grew up in accepting it. It was me. Lord, forgive me, Lord, of giving place to the devil. Forgive me, Lord, of overriding the Holy Spirit conviction. Forgive me, Lord, of not repenting when that conviction was leading me to repentance. Forgive me, Lord, of all my rebellion. Lord, today I'm getting rid of this self-disgust. I'm my own worst critic. No one on earth is near as nasty to me as I am to myself. I'm always doubting. I'm always unbelieving. I'm always criticizing. I'm never good enough. Lord, today I forgive myself. I get a new shot at this thing. I get a new shot. There's a new day coming. I'm going to be a Holy Spirit man. I'm going to be a man of the Word, not a man of the flesh. Today I turn myself over to you. Lord, I can't do it by myself. I'm welcoming you to come into my life and to be my source of strength and my source of hope. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise, Lord. I'm, I'm interested in deliverance, Lord. I'm interested, Lord. I want it, Lord. The possibility to be set at liberty, Lord. I'm interested, Lord. Lord, there's some people that I've been hating. And that's sin, Lord. I've been hating people all the way back from my youth. I hate people who victimized me. I hate people that did things to my body that when I think about it, it brings me utter disgust. But these people need mercy, Lord. My family was cruel to me. My family didn't love me in the way that you, re you required a man to love his son and daughter. Lord, I'm forgiving my family members tonight. I'm forgiving these people in my youth tonight. I turn them over to you, Lord, and I bless them. I bless them right now. I pray you'd send the Holy Spirit to them. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I was treated poorly by a church. I was overridden. I was overworked. I was, they looked at me like I was nothing and never going to be anything, Lord, and it hurt real bad. I wanted you, Lord, and I wanted to serve you. But I was fooled by the devil. I didn't know that he could get in the church and infiltrate even church leadership to cause me pain. I'm sorry that I hated Christians. I'm sorry that I looked at everybody now with disdain and doubt in my heart that they were real. I forgive these people in the name of Jesus. I forgive them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, 
Give me the fight tonight to fight for my freedom, to fight for my ministry, to fight for my family. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Now just speak this out. Satan, I renounce you. I belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're trespassing on his property. You're trespassing in my body. I renounce you in the name of Jesus. I break and loose myself from your holes. And I bind your power. I bind you hand and foot. I now cast you out in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. Drugs, you come out right now. Porn, you come out right now. Anxiety, you come out right now. Fear, you come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Stream, streamers, put your hands on the TV screen. Right now, by act of faith. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, I command you to take your hand off those people. I command you to lose your holds. I command you, take your claws off their minds. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go. Come out now. Take a big breath now. Take a big breath. You'll come right out. Come out. Come out now. Loneliness. Loneliness and isolationism. You come out right now. You come out right now. I command that I don't care spirit to come out right now. Come all the way out right now. Loose him right now. Loose those gifts. Come out right now. Come out now. Heartbreak and disappointment. Come out right now. Feeling that he lost all his youth and all his ability to study and learn and to have a great job. Come out. You're lying. Come out right now. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out right now, you devil. I command you. Loneliness, you come out right now. Quitter spirits, come out right now. Just command them to go. I command you to take your hands off my mind. I command you to take your hands off my body. I command these drugs. You're foreign to me. You're foreign to my God. You're an offense unto the Lord. I command you, go. Come up and go. Come up and out. Devil, you're a liar. Mental illness. I speak to incurable mental illnesses. And I say you're lying. The Lord healeth thee. I bind and loose all fear spirits. All condemnation. All lies. All your network that have moved down into depression. I bind you in the name of Jesus. Come out now. Mental illness. Come out right now. Fear. I command you to come out right now. Lies. I command you to come out right now. Come out. Streamers, open up your mouth. Satan, I renounce you. Satan, I shut the door on you. Satan, Satan I shut the door on you. You're trespassing. I've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. My name has been written in the book of life. I've called upon the name of the Lord, and I'm saved. I don't have to deal with you anymore. I don't have to live with you anymore. I command you, come out now. I command you, come out right now. I command cancers. I speak to cancers. Ovarian cancer, I command you to come out. Breast cancer, I command you to come out. Thyroid cancer, I loose your holes. Cancer of the organs, I command you to go right now. Leukemia, I command you to come out right now. Let's go, devil. Let's go. Take a big breath, folks. Take a big breath. By faith, take a big breath. Come out right now. Homosexuality. Just renounce them. I'm not gay. You threw that thought in my head when I was little. You threw that infiltration into my character sexually years ago. I'm turning my life over now. And I command you to leave. I command you to leave. I command you to take your claws off my mind. I command you to take your claws off my sexual character. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out. Come out. Anger. Always mad at everybody. Come out now. Anger and frustration. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Let this woman go. Come out. Anger. Come out. Frustrations. Frustrations and anxieties. Come out now. Come out now. I command you. Up from the roof. Up on the root, generational curses of heartbreak, come out. Generational curses of heartbreak, come out. Always being let down. 
Always expecting something, but always let down. Come out now. Go. Go. Go all the way out. Come out, Staller. Come out now. Come out now. Come out of that soul. 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 Come out now. Come out. Loose this man's gifts. Loose the anointing for this family. Come out now, devil. By the power and the authority of the name Jesus. By the power and the authority of the name Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I command this shame spirit to leave this woman. You're lying to her. Come out. Go. Shame. Come out of her. You're lying to her. Come out. Shame. Come out of there. You've infiltrated this woman. Come out now. Come out. Come out. Take a big breath, sister. That's not even you. Come out. Condemnation and poor self-worth. You come out. Come out. Loneliness. Feeling ugly. You come out now, devil. You did that to her. Come out now. I loose your holds by the authority of Jesus Christ. Whom the sun sets free is free. Come out, anxieties. Come out, anxieties about not being good enough, smart enough, talented enough. I call you out now. Go. Go. Being hurt by men, I command you to go right now. Being hurt by boys, being lied by boys, being criticized by boys, being back, back, back bitten by so-called friends. Come out. Take a big breath. Go. 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 Come out. Come out now. Stop stalling. You're lying to her. Hey, Mom, put your hand on her stomach right there on her stomach. Come out. Let's go. Come out. Take a big breath. Come out. All that loneliness, you come out right now. Come out. Loneliness, come out. Feeling no one cares. You take your hands off the woman of God. Come out now. Take a big cough from right there. It'll come right out of you, sister. Take a big cough. Just get him out. He's lied to you. He's trying to hold on to you right now. He's trying to say, what are they doing to me? That's a lie. It's not even you. Take a big cough. He'll come right out. Come out, devil. Go. Go. One more. Come out. Go out of there. Come out all the way. Come out. I bind that legion. Come out. Keep going. Come out. Come out. There he goes. Come out. Here, take some of these tissues. Come out. Come out. Go out. Come out. Shame. Shame. You come out of there. Come out. Shame. You come out of there. Any witchcraft curses in the family line, I break you in the name of Jesus. Come out. Any engagement in the occult, I renounce you in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Take your hands off her. Come out. Distrust and mistrust from her mother and father. Come out now. Not trusting anyone, feeling like no one cares. Come out now. Come out of her emotions now. Come out of her emotions now. Come out. Come out. Take another big cough. Get those things out. Another big one. Now come out. They're right there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. There he goes. Keep going. Don't stop those. That's them coming out. Come out. Come out. Come out. I hate myself. I want to die, spirits. Come out. I want to die, spirits. Come out right now. Come out. You're better off dead, spirits. Come out now. You're lying. Come out. Come out now. Come out. Suicidal thoughts. Come out. Suicidal thoughts. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Go. Just drive him out. Open up your lips. Watch how it works. Devil, I want you out of my mind. I want you out of my emotions. I got the right to live my own life with God. You got no right to be tormenting me. I command you, come out now. Watch this. Take a big breath. Let's go, devil. You heard her. You heard her. Come out. Anxieties and fears. Come out. Anxieties and fears. Come out. Loneliness. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. Satan, I bind you now. Strong man of deception. Come out. Strong man of deception. The witchcraft in the family line, I break it in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft in the family line, I break it in the name of Jesus. Go! Go. Another big cough. Got to release him. Go. Go. Go out. Go out. Self-hatred. Go out. Suicidal thoughts. Go. Suicidal thoughts. Come out. Come out. Lord Jesus, come in, Lord. Give her a passion for her freedom, Lord. Give her a passion for this new life in Christ. Now, Mom, command him to go. Devil, come out of my daughter. Devil, come out of my daughter. Stop tormenting my daughter. Stop bringing division between me and my daughter. Stop doing it. Come out now. Come out. Go. Division between her and her mother. Come out. Her mother loves her. You've been lying, devil. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Go. Go. Come out, tormentors. Come out, tormentors. Come out, tormentors. Come out, tormentors. Come out. Go. Another big one. Come out. Hey, can you pray for this lady? 
she's got some some spirits of self hatred and rejection. Come out, devil. Let's go. Let's go. Come out. Come out. Let's go. Lose the family. Lose the family. Come out now. Satan, you're a liar. Streamers, command them in the name of Jesus. Just take a couple big breaths. Come out now in the name of Jesus. Heroin, I command you to die. Come out. Needles, I command you to die. Come out. Come out. All the curses from music. Come out right now. All the lies. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go, devil. Loose him. Shame and humiliation. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Loose right now. Fear, I command you to loose this woman right now. Fear, I bind your power. I cut your cords. Fear, I command you to come out right now. Fear that she's not good enough. Fear that she's not called to do deliverance. Fear that she's not called to preach the word of God. Come out right now. Come out. Let's go. Take a big breath. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Anxieties. Come out right now. Eating disorders. Come out right now. Come out. Loose this body. Loose this body right now by the authority of Jesus, the Son of God. Loose this body now. Loose this body right now. Come out. Come out. Go. Keep fighting. Come out. Let's go. Come out. Food gluttony. Come out. Food gluttony. Come out. Food gluttony. Come out of there. Come out. Mental turmoil. Come out right now. Anxiety is about the future. Anxiety is about his career. Anxiety is about finances. Anxiety is about ministries and pressures. Come out right now. All demonic pressures. Come out right now. All demonic pressure. I command you to come out right now. Sense of being a failure. There he is. Come out. You're a liar. Sense of failure. Come out right now. Sense of not being good enough or loved enough. You come out right now, you false sensations. I command you. Loose his mind, will, and emotions right now. Come out. There he goes. There he goes. Come out. Don't stop those coughs. That's them, sir. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. Come out. Fears about the future. Come out. Sense of that he's always going to be broke. Come out now, you liar. Come out now. Come out now. Come out, poverty spirits. You come out by the authority of Jesus Christ. Come out. Complacent towards sin spirits. Come out right now. Come out right now, sir. You got the anointing. All you have to do is start using your mouth. Satan, take your hands off my mind. Satan, take your hands off my mind. Satan, take your hands off my body. I bind your power. I loose your holds. I command you to go. 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 I command you to leave that woman. I command you to leave right now. By the authority of Jesus Christ. By the authority of Jesus Christ. Come out. Heaviness. You come out now. Come out. Emotional oppression. Come out right now. Physical oppression. Come out right now. Word curses. I break any witchcraft, sorcery, divination in the bloodline influencing their life. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I loose it. I loose it by the authority of Jesus Christ. Spirits of infirmity, spirits of tiredness, spirits of arthritis in the joints, poor health spirits. Come out right now in the name of Jesus. Loose. Loose out right now. Loose out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Stop stalling, devil. Come out right now. Take a big breath. Let's go. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. Satan, take your hands off this woman and come out now. Come out now. Come out. Come out right now. Let's go. Keep going now. They're coming out. Come out. Come out. Keep them going. Come out. Come out now. Mental oppression. Come out. Witchcraft. Come out right now. Witchcraft. Come out right now. Witchcraft. Come out right now. Shaky, you come out right now. Shaky, you come out of there now. Shaky, you come out right now. Take a big cough, sister. They'll come right out. Go. 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 Another one. Go. Go. Come out. Loose his mind. Come out of there right now. Pornography. Residuals. Spirits of pornography and lust. Come out. Party spirits. Come out right now. Party spirits. Come out. Party spirits. Come out now. The spirits of rock and roll. Come out right now. The spirits of rock and roll. Come out right now. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Come out right now. Come out. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Come out now. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Come out. Come out right now. Come out now. Okay. Okay. You ruined the anointing now. Take a big breath. Let's go, devil. You heard all those prayers in tongues. Come out. Come out now. Oppression, you come out right now. Spiritual heaviness, come out right now. 
Spiritual destroyer, come out right now. The spirits that waged the war to stop his ministry, come out right now. Get out of me. Come out right now. Get out. Take a nice big breath. Get out. Okay, you did a good job. Take a big breath now. He'll come out. Go. 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 Go out from the root. Go out. Evil, come out of there right now. Perversions. Homosexualities. Homosexual thoughts when he was in his youth. Come out now. Come out. Homosexual porn. Come out now. Come out now, you devil. Come out now, you devil. Come out now, you devil. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. There he goes. Come out. Come out, you snakes. Come out. Come out now, evil. Evil, come out of there. Evil, come out of there. All the way from the root. Come out now. Get out, Jesus. Hey, sir, what, what are you praying for tonight? Get out. What's your um, main thing? Uh, probably the religion. I, I uh, went through a season where I just uh, started following the teaching of Jesus and I kind of reverted to my own righteousness. And You alone are the judge, Lord. You said with the same measure that we measure, it'll be measured back to us, Lord. And you said, why well, look at the speck in your brother's eye when the whole time there's a plank in your own eye. But hypocrite, first remove the plank which is in your own eye, and you'll see clearly how to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. Forgive me, Lord Jesus, for not obeying your word, Lord, for taking out of my own. Forgive me, Lord. I bless those people, Lord. As the member of Christ, I'm supposed to use my gifts to edify and build up the church. Yeah, there's a time for rebuke, and there's a time to be stern on the word. But, Lord, that critical nature is not from you, Lord. That's from the evil one. He's critical. He's a nitpicker. So, Lord, I renounce that, Lord. Today, I remove the plank of my own eye. I renounce you, Satan. I renounce you criticizing other people. I renounce you getting me to doubt other people's authenticity and true desire for God. That's God's business. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Come out, devil. All those demons of religion. All those demons of religion. You always let people down. You always put a heavy burden on people. Come out right now. This heavy burden that you put on this man. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Demonic heaviness. Come out right now. Demonic heaviness. Come out. The spirit of the hypocrite. Come out. When you came in with a religious spirit, you always send in a hypocrite spirit to make him feel like he's a hypocrite. And so you can beat him down. I break this whole network, devil. I break the whole network now by the authority of Jesus Christ. I break the whole network by the power of the name Jesus, the Son of God. Take a nice, easy breath. Come out, heaviness. Heaviness, I command you to come out right now. Any demons from his youth but when he was sinning with sex, drugs, and rock and roll, I bind you right now. I bind you now. Any spirit that was in that body that morphed over to a religious spirit, I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ to come out. I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ to come out. Just fight them now. Just in your lips. They'll release right off you. You turn your mind on them. Devil, I'm going to love people. Devil, I'm going to use every gift that God to speak to them. I'm going to use every single gift that God gave me to edify the church of God. I'm going to use every gift I got to break the yoke of bondage. Just speak to them. He'll come right off you. You don't need me. Just you, you don't have to yell it. Just speak to him. Devil, you're lying to me. Whom the sun sets free is free. Any spirits hiding in there? Hiders, I bind you right now. Hiders, come out. Hiders in the body, come out. Mental illness, loose the mind. Mental illness, spirits that hiding in the mind, come out. Spirits hiding in the mind, come out. Spirits hiding in the mind, come out. Spirits hiding in the soul, come out. Come out, you liar. False Jesuses, come out right now. False Holy Spirit, come out. You're a drug spirit. You try to morph over into religion. Come out right now. I'll break you. Come out right now. Come out right now. Evil. Evil, I command you to take your hands off this man. Evil, come out. Evil heart of rebellion, come out now. Evil, come out of his brain. Come out. Evil, I command you to come out now. Evil and anger and hatred, come out. Go, anger. Go. Anger, come out. Anger and hatred and murder. 
Come out now. Go. Go. Fighting and hating. Come out now. Fighting and hating. Come out now. Go. 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 Take a big call, Phil. Come right out. Get out of there. Anger. Anger. Come out of that brain. Anger. Come out of that brain. Anger. Come out of there. Anger. Come out. Come out now. I command all the spirits that came in through bad men and men that were operating by the influence of demons. Come out. All transfer spirits from men that taught her how to compromise, that taught her, taught her how to cope with evil behavior and not stand up and stand against it. Come out now. Come out now. Go. Go. I loose you from her emotions. I loose you, spirit, when you came in. Come out right now. I loose you, those transfer spirits from those men. Come out now. Come out now. I loose those soul wounds. There he goes. I loose the soul wounds. I loose the soul wounds from the men. They're cursing and they're failures. They're broken promises. They're using her up like a garment. Come out now. Go. Being used by men. Come out now. Being used by men. Feeling worthless when they leave and they break the promises. I break the curse. I break the curse right now. I break the curse right now. I break the curse right now. Keep coming out, though. Come out. Demonic oppression finance of finances. I break the devourer. I break the canker worm. I break the loop, the root worm and the locust. Come out now. Financial blockers, come out. Financial blockers, come out. Let's go, devil. Loose this man. Come out. You're trying to steal his health. You're trying to steal his money. You're trying to steal his relationship. You're trying to steal his walk with Christ. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out right now. Take a big cough right there. Dad. Take a big cough. Let's go. Big cough, sir. That's from your lungs. Take it from your stomach. Come out, devil. Come out. Come out, you fake cough. You come out for real, devil. Come out. Come out. Mental illness and anger. Come out now. Mental illness and anger. Come out now. Come out, devil. Sorry, so, brother. Like, when you guys cast these demons out and stuff inside this room, is there any chance like they might And there's nothing new under the sun. They don't want you to do it. You're living with all this garbage. They're lying to you right now. That's a man-hater spirit because so many people lie to you. You've dealt with only guys that just do whatever they want to do for whatever they want. I'm observing you, but I just wanted to have a conversation. I don't know how to handle this today. Because it's, it's, um, my wife doesn't wrap up in 10 minutes. Okay. What you got to realize, what you have to realize is... I'm talking about thorough counseling. Is, yeah, okay. But when, before you come here, when you come here, there'll be this sheet and stuff. It, you just got to look at it, and this is how it works. It comes from some person. Now, maybe your mom was doing something, and it comes right down. She played with witchcraft, sorcery. It comes right down. Maybe your dad was into something, and he spoke things. So normally, it has to come through a cause. So if someone's cursing, someone's violent, then what comes down is not necessarily you become violent, or you become what they are, but you suffer residual effect of what they spoke. So there's always a problem, a reaction, a solution. The problem is, hey, you're good for nothing, or, or hey, you always screw up, problem. The reaction is, oh no, I'm not this, this, and that. Then there's the solution. Okay, well, here's your way out. And it's a one, two, three punch of the enemy. So you gotta kinda come with eyes to see and then when you come, you're going to see clearly what you need deliverance from. You do counseling? Yeah, but you can see Mike or you can see one of the ladies uh, on, on Tuesdays. Yeah, we're here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So you can take... Um, um, yeah, we're all here on Tuesdays. But yeah, you can call that number. Yeah, I tried. You tried it? There's, there's, uh, for some reason, there's technology issues, and it just doesn't happen. And I am not, I don't know how to put it into words. I'm not up for, like, paperwork right now. 
I just, it's like, it's almost like, I can't explain it. It's really settled down. But at least God brought me here like that. Okay. Well, this is what you do. Go put your name and number on that, on that piece of paper and put it right underneath that door. And I'm going to tell Mike when he comes that you got, he's got to call you, okay? You can, no, what you do, put it in this box. He's the only one going to touch it. And you tell him right now, you just write on there your name and number and why, and why you need deliverance. I mean, why you need an appointment so he can call you. If you can't call him, how are you ever going to make it? Well, I thought I would catch him in a sort of a, some kind of like, you know. It's going to be just like this. You said that you said you can't do deliverance. You can't do a counseling in 10 minutes, do a life story. Well, if you come home and he's preaching, he's going to be here next Friday. It's going to be just like me, and then it'll be the end of the evening. Once you... All right, and then I maybe he did it. Why don't you just show up here? Why don't you show up here Tuesday at noon? Tuesday at noon. And... And you might have to wait 15 or 20 minutes, but they'll get they'll get you in. With Mike or somebody else. Yeah, somebody that's working that day. So come at come at noon, and there if the door's not open, someone will be here, most likely. But if it's not, they'll open the door because sometimes they come in the side. But you'll get in if you come. You gotta make you gotta make an effort. I mean, otherwise, if you keep waiting till when, if you wait till next Friday when you see Mike, and then you say, Mike, can you put me on the schedule? Well, now you could be a couple weeks out. Now you just keep pushing it in the back burner. Sorry, I'm not myself. But at least I'm here. You want to talk to Kelly? She's the lady that that runs. She's the lady that runs all the audio visual. You want to talk to her for a few minutes? No, I just want to explain myself one time to one person, and if I can do that, that Michael would be the one out of one of them to explain myself. And sometimes I get into moments where I just can't talk about it. I get mute about it. Oh, okay. Well, I, I got a better one for you. Okay, I got a better one for you. Let it out to one person, and that's it. And Thursday. I want you to be here on Thursday. There, on Thursday, there's going to be a sign-up sheet right here. And you tell them I want a one-on-one. -on -one. And that way you're going to get... Uh, he comes sometimes for the service, but he doesn't teach anymore here. But he comes sometimes. But Thursdays are first come, first serve teachings at 7 in the evening. Can you come on Thursday evening? Thursday at 7. And you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get a chance to meet with someone. If you come a little earlier, they'll be here at six thirty, you'll be first. Then you can But that's not counseling, right? No, it is. Yeah. You know you know Um No, he could be here, but mostly it's not. I would like to call for a counselor Okay. All right. Well God bless you. It'll all work out. It's and then you went over that other guy. Something rang true to me about that false one. So I started I had a major breakthrough in there. I just wanted to tell you it was something I think it's like all of a sudden a major lift. Amen. So you know, anyway, I just wanted to Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. He's getting down to the truth. He's getting down to the roots of all this. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. I'm proud of you. Man, I'm telling you. Honesty goes a long way. That's why I had to share that. You're an honest person. You go fast. I'm doing it. Proud of you, brother. When you're when that testimony and everything's rolling, you'll be sharing it up there. What's happening, sir? Good to see you. It's been a few weeks. I'm just wondering what happened to him. I was going to say something wrong. What happened to you? Keep that in there. I was here uh, last Friday. Or I think it was Friday night. Oh, yeah, that's it. Laying low. Go good in there for you, brother. You're getting them out, man. Excellent. Keep jamming. This is.
Amen. Yeah, you're, you're doing good. Yes. Say it one more time. I'm seeing Satan in my mind. I see a picture of the you see that oh he's just trying to scare you go sit down again let's pray the thing he, he can't be doing that to you I'll pray with you before we go God bless you brother where were you sitting at good job brother keep jamming fear you're lying to this woman Fear. I command fear to go. 